أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We were discussing the laws of doubts and obviously we were talking about wudu and uh, we were discussing uh, regarding we were talking about a person who uh, frequently doubts regarding his acts of worship which is known as uh, this person is known as kathir al-shak all right a person who frequently doubts we said in the previous session that if there is someone who doubts frequently while performing the wudu, that means while washing his face or washing his arms or wiping his head or wiping the two feet, he uh, continuously keeps on doubting, right? Now this person will not pay any attention to his doubts. Now if there are certain doubts that are proper, right? But there are a few people, as I had said, as, I, uh, as, as, as was the example given in the previous lesson as well, in the previous session, that, we, uh, that there are certain people who, who keep on performing wudu for 10-15 minutes. And when you see them, they just, they just keep on washing their face and their arms. They keep on rubbing their, their left hand on the right one and the right hand on the left one. So this is something that is uh, not normal, right? This, is, this condition is known as Kathir al-Shak, right? So this person will not pay attention to his doubts. But if there is someone who is not such kind of a person, but there are certain doubts that are proper, and one must pay attention to a few doubts. Like what? Now, if someone has taken wudu, right, someone is in the state of wudu and now he is doubting whether the wudu that he took, uh, did it become void or not? Did it get invalidated or not? This is the question. He took the wudu, he did it, right, and now he is doubting uh, with regards to a hadith, with regards to something that invalidates a wudu. Now here, this person, this, this doubt, how are we going to be clearing it off? In this condition, what are we going to say? We'll say that this person is in the state of wudu. That means he need not take any wudu. And he will be regarded as in the state of purity, in a state of uh, tahara. That means his wudu will be valid. All right? So if someone doubts whether his wudu has become void or not, he must treat as it is still uh, being valid. Alright, this is how he's going to be treating. Okay. But here comes an important mas'ala. And that mas'ala is regarding istibra. Istibra is the nine acts. Alright that one must perform after urinating all right that will be discussed and if someone after he uses the toilet after urinating he has not performed istibra and without perform because istibra is something that is mustahab all right it's something that's mustahab so uh, if someone after urinating he uh, did not perform istibra and then he took wudu, he did his wudu. In this situation, in this situation, after performing wudu, now some fluid, it came out of the urinatory organ. All right. Now, if this fluid, after the discharge of this fluid, whether he, now he is doubting whether it's urine or not, this fluid will be treated as urine. I hope the mas'ala is clear. So the mas'ala says that if the person has not performed istibra and a certain fluid is discharged from his body, this fluid will be treated as urine. Alright, this will be treated as urine. And obviously, if it touches the parts of one's body, it will make it najis. Similarly, it will also make uh, the trouser or uh, the clothes that are in contact with with this fluid they will also become najis right 
So this is something, this is regarding something who, uh, someone who has not done istibra, right? <clears throat> and similarly, if a person doubts whether he has performed wudu or not. Now the first person, the first mas'ala that we mentioned, it was regarding someone who was doubting after performing wudu. Now after performing wudu, someone is doubting whether I use the lavatory, whether I use the toilet, or whether I slept, whether I, uh, I did something that invalidates the wudu, did I do something, he's doubting. But he is certain that he took wudu. In this condition, what did we say? We said that the, uh, the wudu is valid. It's absolutely all right. But now, the second mas'ala that we discussed right now, here the person is doubting the wudu itself. He's doubting whether he took wudu or not. All right? So this is something that he is doubting. In this condition, we will say that he will treat himself as if he has not taken any wudu and he will go and take wudu again. Again meaning, that means he will go and take wudu. All right. He, uh, he says that he must deem that he has not and he must perform wudu. In this situation, the person should perform wudu. Okay. <clears throat> now, Another important mas'ala. Now we discuss two stages. We discuss two circumstances. The first one when the person was certain that he has taken wudu but he was not certain regarding something that invalidates wudu has occurred or not. Now the, in the second scenario what did we discuss? We discussed that a person is doubting that he took wudu itself. He is uh, doubting this uh, condition that did I take wudu? He is not doubting that did I do something that invalidates wudu. No, he is doubting something that uh, he is doubting actually the, the uh, that means uh, the taking of wudu. Did he do wudu or not? If he is doubting in such a way, what did we say? We said that he must take wudu and he has as if he has no wudu. All right. Now the third scenario we will be discussing that in a state where a person is certain that he took wudu. On the other hand, he is certain that he did something that invalidates wudu. Now, take the example of someone who did wudu. And the, the same person, he used the toilet as well. Okay. Now, but the confusion is, the doubt is that did he use the toilet first or did he do the wudu first? If he used the toilet first and then took wudu, then his wudu is all right. If he did the wudu first and then used the toilet, then his wudu will be invalidated. Now here the person, what is he doubting? He is doubting that I took wudu and I used the toilet. But I don't know which one was uh, before and which one uh, was uh, later. Alright? He, he, he is doubting whether I did the wudu first or I used the toilet first. If I did wudu first, then it's batil. It's obviously it will be batil after using the toilet. If I use the toilet first, then obviously my wudu is all right. Why? Because I use the toilet first and then I took wudu. In this scenario, he says, <clears throat> all right, in this event, he says that uh, he has doubt before the prayers, all right, he must perform wudu for those prayers. If he is doubting before the prayers, all right. And if he has this doubt during the prayers, all right, in this condition also he must break. He must break his prayers and perform wudu. And if the doubt is after the prayers, if this doubt it comes after the prayers, the prayers that he has performed, they will be all right, but he needs to take another wudu for the subsequent prayers. This is something really important, right? Now I want to discuss this mas'ala again, but uh, we don't have, we do not have enough time. Anyways, let's discuss this, uh, discuss it once again. Here, the mas'ala says that someone he is certain that he took wudu, and also he is certain that he used the the toilet, but he does but d does not know which one was first. Did he use the toilet first, or he did, or he took wudu first, right? Now in this condition. What does uh, Ayatollah Sistani say? He says that if this doubt comes into his mind before 
performing the prayers, he must take wudu. Before performing any prayers, I'm doubting this way. That did I, uh, did I do the wudu first or did I use the toilet first? I must uh, take the wudu again. Okay. And if this comes, so I'm, uh, and uh, if this doubt, it comes while performing the prayers, here the person should uh, also break the prayers and take his wudu again. But if the doubt, it comes into my mind, after when I finish, when I finish my prayers, after when I finish saying my prayers, in this condition, my prayers are valid. They are absolutely all right. But this will not make the other prayers. This will not make me fit to enter the other prayers. But I need to perform wudu for the other prayers that I will be praying. Right? So here, this is the mas'ala regarding this. Uh, regarding this situation, regarding this third scenario. Okay. Now, if a person, another, another uh, doubtful question, that means a question that is regarding uh, the Masail, regarding the ruling of doubts. He says, if a person doubts after prayers, whether he had performed wudu or not, in this condition, his prayers, they are valid, but he needs to perform wudu for the subsequent prayers. All right, this is something that, uh, that uh, this is not related to the third scenario that we discussed uh, just uh, before 30 seconds, one minute. No, this is regarding something else. This is a general mas'ala that if a person is, com is doubting after when he finishes prayers, he is doubting that did he perform the wudu? Did he took wudu or not? Did he do it? Did, did he do wudu or not? In this condition, the prayers that he performed, they are valid. They are all right. He, d he need not... Uh, uh, perform them again all right but he needs to take wudu for the subsequent prayers that means that wudu that uh, being those prayers valid will not be sufficient to and to make this person fit to enter the other prayers but he needs to take wudu for the other prayers that he will be uh, praying okay so this is also uh, Another uh, masala, and the last masala regarding this, regarding the doubts, is that if a person during prayers, if that means he's doubting during the prayers, that whether he, uh, whether or not he had wudu or not, did he perform wudu or not? While I'm praying, I'm just uh, asking myself, I'm questioning, I'm doubting, that did I perform wudu or not? In this condition, or based on obligatory precaution, what one must do? He must uh, perform wudu and say his prayers again. He must perform the wudu and must say his prayers again. Okay. Now this was all uh, the, the, the rules regarding wudu. Right? Most of them and the most important of them, they were uh, these laws that we discussed right now. Okay. Now we're going to be discussing those things for which it's obligatory on us to take wudu. While I'm talking, while I'm discussing something, uh, something or while I'm uh, going above the pulpit to say a majlis, for example, or while I uh, enter into a mosque or any other act when I do, is it obligatory on me to take wudu? What are the conditions, what are the situations in which it's obligatory on a person to perform the wudu? He says there are six conditions, there are six places. Wudu is, it becomes obligatory uh, for six things, all right? It's obligatory to perform wudu for six things, okay. The first one is for prayers, for all kinds of prayers. Whether it be obligatory prayers, whether it be recommended. It be obligatory or recommended, one must perform wudu for all his prayers. Alright? So when I want to say my morning prayers or the noon prayers or whatever, the afternoon prayers, Maghrib, Isha, Dhuhr, Asr, Fajr, or uh, when, uh, if, uh, when I want to say the night prayers, which is namaz shab salat al layl or any other prayer, any other prayer, the prayers that are uh, prayed in the holy month of Ramadan, so all these prayers, it's obligatory for a person to take wudu, except one. 
except one prayer, which is Salatil Mayyit, the prayers that are performed on a Mayyit, all right, on a dead body, after when it's, uh, after giving it the Ghusl and the shroud, covering it with the shroud, that is the Kafan, all right, it's obligatory to say prayers on, on the Mayyit. It's obligatory to say namaz, to say salat on that mayyit. This is known as salat al mayyit. Now for this prayer, it's not obligatory on a person to take wudu. Even if you're not in a state of wudu, you're not in a state of tahara, even in that situation, it's permissible for you to stand and say the prayers for that person, for that dead person, right? So wudu is obligatory for all kinds of prayers, except one, which is Salat al -mayyit. So this is the first thing out of those six. Out of those six things for which we need to perform wudu, this is the first one. Okay. The second one is when a person wants to say uh, a tashahud or a sujood or a sajda that he has forgotten. Now, for example, a person was praying his, uh, he was saying his prayers, all right, and while saying these prayers, he forgot to do one of the sajdas. All right, one needs to prostrate two times in every rakat, right? After when he sits, he, wants, he should go uh, uh, on the floor, put his head on, on the ground, on the earth, and would say, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdih, twice, right? Then come up and then we'll say it again. So one must perform the sajda twice, right? If someone forgets one of them, and remembers after the prayers, after saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Here he comes to remember that I did not say my second sajda in, for example, in my second rak'ah. Now here, what's obligatory on this person? It's obligatory on this person to say the sajda after completing the prayers. Now this sajda, it requires wudu. The person should be in the state of tahara to say this wudu, to say this sajda. I hope the mas'ala is clear. This is the second thing. For a sajda or a tashahud, similarly if a person forgets tashahud, that has been, that have been forget, uh, forgotten, alright? If between them and the prayers, one has not done something that invalidates the wudu. One has done something that invalidates the wudu, alright? Uh, so I hope the mas'ala is clear. After f finishing one's morning prayers, someone used the toilet and then came back without taking wudu. And he's, he's finished with the morning prayers. He went to the toilet and then he came back. And what did he say? He said uh, he was certain that he did not perform the second sajda in the second rakat. So here it's obligatory on him to take wudu, to do wudu again and will perform the second sajda. All right. So here it's obligatory on this person to perform these forgotten acts. It's obligatory to take wudu. So this is the second point. Now within brackets, we must also say that as far as sajda to sahav is concerned, sajda is sahav, this is the, uh, the better way to say it. Sajda is sahav because there are two sajdas, two prostrations that are done to, uh, to correct something. Now this will also be discussed in the book of prayers when we discuss the laws and the rulings regarding the prayers, we will be discussing what are sajdatul sahab. And obviously, if you want to know them, you can uh, refer to certain books or websites or ask other ulama. Obviously, we'll, we won't be having this much time to, to go into brackets for this long. Anyways, so if someone wants to perform sajdatul sahab, sajdaya sahab, it's not obligatory on the person to take wudu. It's not obligatory to, for him to be in the state of tahara to say sajdatul sahab. All right, that's what he says. That it's not obligatory, however, to perform wudu for the two prostrations for, uh, for any kind of mistake that a person makes. All right, for example, he's forgotten the, the tashahud or he stood up in a place where he should not have st uh, stood up, right, uh, while praying. This will be discussed. These laws are mentioned in, uh, in, the, uh, in the laws of prayers. Okay. Now, similarly, the third thing is for which a person, it's obligatory in a person to take wudu is while uh, doing the tawaf around the Kaaba, whether it be Hajj or it be Umrah, whether it be Hajj or for Umrah, while, while performing the tawaf, it's obligatory on the person to take wudu, to be in the state of Tahara, all right, while circumambulating around the Kaaba. So this is the third point, okay. Now, the other three, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be discussing them in 
the next part but before finishing we must also discuss a few laws regarding the holy month of Ramadan okay so we were discussing about the things that invalidate the fast right now one of such uh, thing that invalidate of the fast are uh, one of such thing is that on an obligatory precaution of course that if someone causes thick dust to reach his throat if someone causes thick dust to reach one's throat this will also make the uh, make uh, the fast it will make it void it will invalidate the fast all right someone causes thick dust to reach one's uh, throat this will make the fast void this is unlawful for a person to do it okay so whether the dust is of something that is lawful that means whether it be uh, it be flour okay flour that is taken from wheat or it be mud mud is something that's unlawful to eat all right except turbatul hussein alayhi salam turbatul imam al hussein alayhi salam that is only for the healing purpose that can be used in a small amount but mud is it's uh, it's not permissible to to eat it so even if it be something permissible like flour or it be something unlawful like mud one must not make the uh, the thick dust enter into one's throat okay now if someone forgets that he is fasting and does not take care and then he does something uh, similar he does something uh, similar uh, uh, reaches his throat uh, but he, it was not intentional okay in this condition his fast will be all right his fast will not be invalidated okay if someone forgets and then unintentionally someone has uh, some, someone makes a bit of uh, such kind of dust enter into his throat this will not invalidate the fast the same thing we discussed while we were discussing eating and drinking right that if someone is has forgotten that he is fasting this happens normally in the earlier days of the holy month of ramadan uh, for those people who do not fast the month of rajab and shaban because this is something new for them they're they're doing something new after 11 months right so sometimes they they forget that they are fasting so what do they do they eat something or they drink something by mistake this is unintentional and obviously as we said that this will not invalidate one's fast similarly we're saying that if someone forgets that he's fasting and he does not take due care uh, or if something if dust or something similar reaches his throat involuntarily that means out of mistake in this condition his fast does not become invalid it will not be invalidated okay and similarly here also here uh, Ayatollah Sistani mentions the, the mas'ala which is asked a lot regarding immersing one's complete head into water is it permissible for us to immerse our head into water or not is it permissible will it invalidate the uh, the fast will it in, uh, will it invalidate our psalm or not here he says immersing the entire head in water does not invalidate one's fast although it's not recommended to do it it's makruh it's makruh to Im for a person to immerse one's complete head in, uh, into water although it's makruh but it will not invalidate the fast okay now <clears throat> and the same is the case uh, and uh, here this is the reason now one might ask that uh, why is smoking not permissible Alright, this is probably the last thing we're discussing regarding uh, today's uh, discussion. That why is smoking also not uh, permissible while a person is fasting as far as the views of, uh, view of Ayatollah Sistani is concerned. The same is the thing with smoking and he mentions it. Within these laws, he mentions this. That smoking is also not permissible. If someone smokes while he's fasting this will also invalidate one's fast because it might not be considered as eating something or drinking something as I said in the first uh, discussion that there are a few things and these are the only things that invalidate fast right smoking was not one of them 
Why? Because smoking is mentioned into, uh, under this point, making thick dust or something, a thick kind of smoke to uh, enter one's uh, throat. This invalidates the fast. Here he mentions uh, regarding smoking and uh, the use of tobacco. The use of tobacco that is, for, uh, that is used for smoking. Okay. So this, uh, this is also another thing that invalidates one's fast. So if someone, let's conclude. So if someone makes thick dust enter into one's throat, this will invalidate the fast. This was all regarding today's discussion. Inshallah, we're going to be discussing some other laws in the next one. Hada wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi tahirin.